Hi everyone. Um, well, now it's, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what exactly Twilio looks like, how to set up a hotline um, from like basic steps. And I already actually have a hotline set up. So we could make this a live demo and try calling it and seeing how it works uh, after I go through this process. Um, so it was, this was for like a previous project. Um, so I can, so I'm gonna use that as kind of a demonstration, but I also set up an account for our team, which is in the Slack. Um, I use my meet email because I don't have a generic meet email, unfortunately. I guess the first thing that we can do is let's just dive right in and please let me know if you have any questions because I think okay. the underlying concept once you get it makes a lot of sense but there's definitely a lot of there's some moving parts that like take a little while to understand but the code itself is not hard so I'm just gonna put that out there okay awesome I'm gonna share my screen now so how exactly does Twilio work so the idea is that Twilio is a service that takes phone calls and converts it into HTTP requests. Um, so if you remember back when we did Flask and stuff, whenever you go to a website, um, that's basically you're making an HTTP request, right? So you have a path um, and you're requesting to a server uh, a, particular, uh, a particular path. Um, what Twilio does is that every time you call a particular number, either using voice or using text, um, you can actually forward those requests into turn them into URL requests. So essentially calling this number is exactly the same thing as posting this URL into your browser window. Yeah, so Twilio kind of does all the underlying work for you. And all you have to do is specify the URL that you want to go to and whether or not it's going to be what, when you're calling this number or when you're texting this number. Um, or there, they have other options too but I only, I only put in these two. So calling this number, uh, plus one, two, oh, seven, five, one, five, eight, two, two, three is exactly the same thing as making a URL, uh, URL request uh, to this website. Um, and I can actually show you how that works. So if we copy this and paste it into our URL. So this is the same text that the, that the uh, automatic uh, that the person is going to hear when they call this number. And so why is this useful? Well, the nice thing about this is that this allows us then to program responses to phone calls because um, there's like a whole lot of underlying architecture that Twilio is taking care of for us so that we can just use Flask, which is something that we learned previously in order to handle these URL, our URL requests. So, so you're like, okay, so this is some like a server uh, and this like there's a post request here, right? Uh, where we're going to the route backslash voice. Um, and so the first question is, well, I probably want to own this server, right? Like I don't want to forward my request to some random website that I don't own. So I need to somehow make this remote server accessible such that I could program how I want to handle those requests. And so the second step after setting, so step one, set up your Twilio, get a phone number, figure out where, like, and then the next step is where do we want to send these phone calls, right? Like we have to own the server in order to be able to handle our own requests. And so this is how I do it. I use ngrok. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, if you want to make an account for everyone and just post it, that would be great. But every single person needs to download it because what it's doing is it's basically allowing, so I can go to this main section. What does it do? Well, ngrok creates public URLs for exposing your local web server. So what does that mean? So every, so when you start Flask, you know, like whenever, when we made our first websites uh, in year two over the summer, uh, you could access it by going to like localhost.com backslash 8,000 or something, but we couldn't access it online until we published it using uh, Heroku, right? The idea is that um, we want to somehow connect Flask, but with our phone request has to be accessible from a remote server, right? Because someone else is calling from not your laptop, not your machine. So they need to be able to access uh, like a website from a server that's not your local 
server. Um, and so the only thing that NROC does is it says, okay, this online remote server is equivalent to your local host. So it maps this remote server to your local host server. So you can access that server remotely. So I'm just using these two programs that do all these nice things for us and then putting the pieces together. Um, and so once you download NGROC, what does that look like? And so I actually have done it. So this is saying that this website, which is accessible remotely from any window, any browser, is equivalent to my local host, 5000. How did you reach this? Yeah, so the instructions are actually right here. So once you hit, like, if I type in dot backslash ngrok space HTTP space 5000, it starts up this window. The issue is every time I restart it, the forwarding path is going to be different. So I actually have to go in and change that number on my Twilio account. So that's why I'm a little wary to do it right now. Um, but I can, so this, uh, this server is actually going to be the same thing that I'm forwarding to. So that's where that server comes from, is it's my ngrok uh, remote oh, okay. server. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's pretty much downloading it, you open it, and then you just run it. And it's a three-line command, and you automatically have something that goes to your local host, which is super nice. Okay, so now I have a remote server. So now what does my pipeline look like? I make a phone call. It accesses HTTP dot dot backslash backslash my ngrok server backslash voice, and that gets forwarded to my local server, right? So I can handle it using my local server. It's, it's a port between the two. And so now I can use Flask to handle those requests on my local server. So basically these are just importing Flask. This is importing Twilio's specific API. Um, so uh, there's, some, there's some documentation on how to do this, which I'll post into the group chat. Um, but basically, I'm particularly using what happens, I wanna be able to dial and I wanna be able to have a voice response. And so voice response is like, when you call, I want somebody to be able to say something. Um, and so, and then also I have, I start, so this is just Flask terminology. I start my Flask app. Okay. Um, and then I also have two global variables that I'll talk about when I talk about what this particular line does. And so what this particular application does um, and so I can actually show you. Let me try calling. Uh, okay, let's see if you can hear this. I'll turn my speaker on. So I'm going to call 207 515. So this is the number that I own through Twilio. Calling. We are matching you with another caller and we're calling you as soon as possible. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm actually calling myself right now. Um, cool. So the idea is that if there is someone in the queue, we say, thank you for calling. We found you a match. We are dialing now, right? Because the length of the queue is greater than zero. Um, so previously, the length of my queue was equal to zero. So I said, thank you for calling. We are matching you with another caller and we'll call you as soon as possible. Does that make sense? Um, wait, no, I, I love Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me, uh, explain. so if there's no one in the queue, right, our queue starts out at zero, of length zero. Yeah. So the first thing that happens is when I call, I start a voice response. So I open a voice response command. I figure out who's calling. So I get this caller number, um, and then I print it out locally just so, this was for me to test to see if it was working. Okay. So I get the caller number by pulling the value from my request. Um, mm -hmm. And this is Twilio terminology. Um, it's basically all in their written documentation, um, but every request has a value um, where I can get the caller number. And so I get the caller number. And so if the length of the queue is equal to zero, I append the caller number to the queue. And then I say, oh. thank you for calling. We are matching you with another caller and we'll call you as soon as possible. So that was the first thing that happened, right? Um, Wait, so that... if the length of the queue is equal to zero, doesn't that, doesn't that mean that there's 
no one else waiting in the line and that exactly so there's no one else waiting so that means that you haven't been matched with anyone right because there's no one who's oh. waiting in line and so I say so that was the first phone call there's no one in line and so Wait, I say I think I for... misunderstood what Q does Q Q is the what? line of people who are waiting to be matched Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, sorry, I I, I messed that. You was like the people meeting. that are waiting to like, like people that are calling and waiting to talk to someone. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, I have it. no, okay, <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? So the first time yeah. that I'm calling, I append the. So when I called the first time, I got put into the queue because there was no one else who was waiting. So this is like a self-match helpline that I've basically made. Um, okay. And then I return, you just return the response as a string. Um, cool. And so the second time that I called, is the length of the queue still equal to zero? Oh, no. Sorry. No, right, because I'm in the queue. And so the second time that I call, the response says, thank you for calling. We found you a match. We are dialing now. And so the callee number, the person who is going to be matched with you, is popped okay. off the length of the queue, right? So it's the person in the queue. Oh, and wait. then is it an actual queue? Like Yeah, so it's a line. No, an actual like queue in the They're like wait, how do I am I missing No, words? it's okay. Hold on. <laughs> There's like the actual queue class in computer science. Oh, no, I, so, I don't think it Python has queues, I just use a list, but it, it acts like a queue, because I'm popping off the top, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's identical. Um, okay. So, I construct a dial, right, so dial means that I'm calling, I'm going to call that particular number using this caller ID, and so that means that through the number that is, like, so I'm going to use my number to call someone else, and it's going to link the two. So then those two people are basically just talking to each other, but it's anonymous because I'm using the caller ID of my own number. Does that make oh, sense? Okay, so I'm yeah. linking the number. So I'm like forwarding the call to the callee number. Um, but I'm okay. using my own number as the ID, so it's anonymous. So it's like an That's anonymous cool. matching hotline. Um, yeah, so this is just the forwarding. I append the dial to the response. Um, this is just this was just code for me to check to see who has called each other so far. Um, it was just for me to test things. It wasn't. Uh, I wouldn't worry. It's not necessary for the execution of this code. Um, okay. So for example, I called myself. That's that's the only thing that total is doing. It's just telling me oh, okay. what I did. <laughs> um, and then that's pretty much it. So, yeah. That's all the code that I have to write in order to create like a hotline where if one person calls, they get put in a queue, and then once the second person calls, they get matched together. So it's like an automatic really matching cool. hotline. Yeah, and it's not like it's not very much code, right? Like, no, it's, it's not. not. Even with like, yeah, it's not too long. Cool. So okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna construct a repository for us so we can all at least work on the same code. Um, it's pretty much, you only pretty much need a server.py, especially for our purposes. Um, there's a lot more complicated things that you can do. A lot of companies actually use Twilio to, like, manage their automatic helplines. Um, but I don't think we need to do things that are overly fancy or, like, you know, have too many options and stuff. But yeah. those, those things are available, too. Cool. Do you have any questions? Does everything make sense? Yeah, it does. Sorry, I um, spent so long trying to figure out how to get the text bigger. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so do you want me to set up um, um, like a shared thingy? I forgot the name of the thing. Yeah, can you set up a shared NGROC account um, so that when everyone downloads it, we can use the same token um, at yeah. least? And then mm -hmm. after that, I will... Um, it's probably better whenever we're coding to still like code together um, or have one person working at it at a time just because we're forwarding to a specific website that's ported to a specific local host. 